All right, Arya, what do you have for me today? Argonaut, Juggler, and Volante. All right, what do you want me to make them do? Rock! All right. Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin, and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin. And this week, we're going to be taking a look at three amazing pedals in the pedal, Palin Pedal Picking Challenge. Um, we're going to be taking a look at the Mythos Argonaut, the Kingsley Juggler V3, and the Strymon Volante. Um, three amazing pedals. I'm so excited that Aria picked these out. So we're going to have a lot of fun with these. Um, but I want to talk just a little bit because um, I know most of you are familiar with Mythos pedals and with um, uh, Strymon, of course. But a lot of people out there may not be very familiar with Kingsley. So just wanted to kind of give you a, a little bit more information about them before we jump into today's challenge. Um, Kingsley pedals are some of the most amazing pedals out there on the market and there's something that you're seeing pop up on a lot of professional boards but they don't have any retailers currently right now the only way to get a kingsley pedal uh, is to either buy one on the used market or to contact simon directly and their their website will actually put a link to it down below here um, uh, Simon and his wife run the business. They are, uh, Simon and Christine, absolutely amazing people. Um, super sweet. But they do have a massive waiting list. You, it's, you're talking about usually a year to 15 months wait because everything they do is hand built. But what Simon does better than most pedal makers, in my opinion, is Simon is a guitarist. And so all of his stuff is designed with a guitar in mind. And I first got introduced to them because of a pedal called the Page. And for those that aren't familiar with it, the Page is basically their, their most famous pedal. It's essentially a tube uh, boost. So it uses a an actual 12 ax 7, which you can swap out with a 12 uh, at 7 if you want to, uh, but you, use, you have a 12 ax 7 tube in there. You um, are essentially hitting the front of an amp with an extra gain stage. Now, I run the page at an extremely clean level and use it as a boost and it just allows me to, to push an amp a little bit more, especially because I keep a lot of my amps right on the edge of breakup. So by just pushing it just that little bit more, you really get that dig in and you get your, your amp to really go for it. So I love using the page for that. But the, the real beauty of all of Kingsley's pedals is almost every single one of them uses an actual tube inside the pedal to give you actual to break up. And the way that Simon dials these in is magic. I've played a lot of pedals with two preamps in them before, but it is something beyond compare when you see what he can do. And Simon has a really good understanding of old vintage amplifiers. And so what he likes to do with his different pedals is break down what makes those amplifiers tick and try to find a way to give you a pre-amplifier. So he's got these larger pedals, uh, like the Juggler is my absolute favorite, um, but he also has one called the Constable. Um, and these are preamp pedals that are really designed to be plugged directly into the effects loop on an amp or directly into a power amp to create something that would sound a lot like an old vintage amplifier, but without having to lug around an old vintage amplifier to really give you that power section. I mean, that uh, that uh, preamp section of an old vintage amplifier. So the Constable sounds like an amazing plexi if you get it dialed in the right way. Um, my Juggler, just it's one of the most beautiful cleans you've ever heard. And then it can just push into this really gnarly drive section. Absolutely love it. Um, he hasn't done a whole lot of metal uh, style pedals yet. Um, there's some that can get there uh, when you push them a little bit and crank them up, but really it's more of that. You need you need some distortion on top of that to really get them to distort. They're really more about gain and boosting, so you're going to hear a lot of two break up, not the like chugga chugga kind of sound, if that makes sense. But um, I just recently got in the Juggler V3, which is one of the ones that Aria picked out. Um, it was sitting on my desk and I 
so excited to get to mess around with it. So we're going to actually play with this together for the first time. Um, this is based on the Dumble sound. So really going to have some trebly kind of steel string singer um, break up in there. We should hear a lot more treble when we, when we hit this in. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this. So we'll jump over to the pedal board, play with these. But please, if you get a chance... Go to Simon's website. In future episodes, I'll do an actual Kingsley breakdown, um, and I'll run through a bunch of his different pedals and show you the different sounds that they can make, because they are all truly unique. Even his multiple versions of the page. He has the page TS and the, the page Dumble and the, the, the regular page. He, he has pages that are all voiced to different style amps. So he can do just about anything that you would want. So please reach out to him, take a look at their website, um, and I encourage you to try out his pedals if you get a chance. But let's jump over to the uh, Palin Pedal Picking Challenge this week and uh, see what Aria has picked out for us. All right, so we are ready to do today's Palin Pedal Picking Challenge. Today, we are going to be using my Cower Mr. Sparkles Corona. Uh, this was one of the first Coronas Doug built uh, back during COVID. Um, this has the Ronin... Uh, foil buckers in there. They are just killer sounding. Um, gorgeous finish. I mean, Doug did all this. We were having so much fun. Got the cool body cut out in the back um, and some kind of drum sparkle binding on the neck. Really, really fun guitar. This is one of my favorites to play. Um, sounds really great, clean. I'll play a little bit of that for you. And then the neck. So now let's have some fun. We are going to go one at a time just like normal and then we'll turn all three of the pedals on and go from there. So let's start with the Mythos Argonaut. Now this is a just one trick pony. Uh, you turn it on and the octave comes on and blends it with the regular sound of your guitar. So... Not a fuzz really, it's more just a real spanky octave. And it's controllable by your volume pedal. I mean, your volume knob. So it responds really, really well. Now this, when mixed with fuzz pedals, that's just awesome. I love taking some of my fuzz, because I love an octave fuzz. Uh, uh, my Lysis is still one of my favorite fuzzes of all time. But really, by putting the Argonaut before or after um, just about any fuzz that you've got, you can get these really, really cool octave sounds. So we'll mess with that a lot today. Um, but let's dig into the Kingsley Juggler first, and then we'll bring that uh, octave in. So the Juggler, like I was talking about in the intro, is actually based on a Dumble preamp. So when I activate this, you're going to hear a lot more sparkle, a little bit more sizzle, and, and definitely more treble here. So it's got a three-band EQ. You've got your treble, your middle, and your bass. And then you notice we've got three switches here. So the first one just activates the pedal. The master volume will affect everything that we do. So we can turn this all the way down and it will shut off the signal completely. The second is a second gain stage. So you're essentially bumping up an extra drive section that is determined by this volume, this tone, and this drive knob over here. And then these highs and lows can actually switch the EQ settings as we go through it. Um, and then your final one is a little boost here at the end too that you can, that you can bump up if you're doing a solo and want to drive it into a next level. So let's start by just dialing in our core tone. So again, here, let's do our cleans. Now with our... Already spankier. All right, let's take the master down a little bit first, and then we're going to take the volume down a bit. We'll bring trebles about right. Let's wash out the mids just a little and see where that takes us. Not quite as spanky. OK, 
kind of gives us some of that funk compression. You've got a bright switch here. That's turned on right now. Let's turn it off. And it's a three-way in the middle position. And then all the way up. So you can hear it. it's got a lot of brightness there. You can really define how much you wanna you wanna have out of that. So we will let's leave it off for right now, and then we'll just see what we want to do. So output we can control exactly how much that master is gonna do. Let's just leave that in the middle for right now. All right, real quick, I am going to turn the master down. I'm gonna put the gain all the or the volume all the way up. some gain on it by itself but it's definitely more of a boost side our real drive section is going to be stage two so stage two here you've got your own separate volume control your tone and your drive knob so let's see just by implementing that You can already hear that steel stringy sound coming through there. So let us, I think we're bright with knob is right. I think we're gonna take the drive up just a little bit, keep the volume down, we're gonna bring the tone up. I like that. Pretty darn wicked. All right, and then if we want to boost it a little bit, we can. See here, just thickens it a little bit. Let's take our lows up. take that drive out you can still get this beautiful clean boost turn off cool let's see here I'm curious about something a lot of times you'll leave the master wide open now I like that it doesn't blow out your eardrums when I have the master wide open so this just keeps us from quashing any other drive we have on that. That almost gets too saturated. I think we need to take it back up here. I like how the master doesn't lose a lot.
that's going to be interesting. Okay. Now, last but not least, the Strymon Volante. Now, I think I've talked on the program before about how excited I am for the new T-Rex Benson Echo Rec. Um, That is one of my favorite sounds of all time. I am so excited. I had a Benson years ago, sold it, have regretted it ever since. Um, So to have one coming back uh, is so exciting. But the really cool thing is Strymon a few years ago released the Volante, and this is one of the best emulations of that I have ever heard. And what I love is it's actually three things in one. You've got the drum echo, which is more uh, akin to that Benson Eckerot style. You've got an old school tape echo, which is more like that uh, space echo kind of thing that we've done. And then down below, you actually have a reel to reel as well. So I'll show you what both or all three of those sound like. So let's go, this is just... And then it's got heads on it, just like our one that we did last week, where you can actually uh, pick which heads you want to have on. Let's go like this and go. You see a short head? Slightly faster. And your long head. But the cool thing is what they cleverly did was they have these feedback lights as well. So if you want to have some oscillation and you want to take things into feedback, but you only want one or more of the echoes to be feedbacking and you don't necessarily want that feedback from all of them, you can switch which one of these echoes actually gives you some feedback. What's really cool is say we want the slapback echo to feedback but we don't even want to hear the echo itself in the mix. We can do that and actually put that on there. And then the feedback that we hear will actually come from the short echo. But we never hear the echo itself. And you can take your repeats up like this. So the feedback again here is not coming from our echoes. It's coming from the short echo that we don't even hear. And then they've got a tape echo. So you hear it sounds more like a tape. And then they've got the old reel to reel. Love that. And then you've got your spring reverb in here. You can really, again, kind of like. You can really overload that. I like to set this more in the middle, kind of keep. And if we do feedback on everything, you can hear that. really start to feedback. So again, lots of functionality there that you can do. You can also increase the speed. You've got tap tempo, which is something like I talked about last week. It's so important on these pedals. Um, You've got digital recall of your settings. Um, But then the other cool thing is, let's go back to the drum section here. Actually tape, I think will show this even better. Um, Let us get, you can increase the wear on your tape. so that those repeats aren't perfect and they kind of warble a little bit on the background. And then you can even do the same thing to the mechanics on there. Because truly the thing that's special about these old units from the the 60s and 70s is that there's so much age on them now that things are starting to fail a little bit or don't work just quite perfectly, but that gives them their character and their uniqueness. And that's what I love about this is this lets you dial in your own character, your own uniqueness into the sound, but make it recallable and that will never fade. It'll never change. So 20 years from now, when you want to make that same sound from a song you wrote, you can recall that with a Strymon. So, I say let's just dig into it. Let's put all three of them on and let's see where we're going. Um, We'll start with the boost side of the juggler and then we'll kind of go from there. Interesting. Okay, 
All right, I'm digging. Let's. I want some gain though. I don't want it to be too high though. Let's take the master right. Ooh. That doesn't stink already. Um, let's take the master down a little bit. We're gonna give us a little bit. Nah, I don't want that fuzziness of there. I want to see where can I gain a little more drive. Yeah, that's actually what I need. A little more drive, a little less volume. Okay, now let's play a little bit with this, so. I want us to give our record level just a little bit more. The repeats. definitely got a little of that Gilmore-esque sound. That's kind of cool. All right, but let us... What if we don't have it so drivey? What if we have it... Ooh. Okay, I got an idea here. Bear with me. Let's turn the treble up just a little. a little and I want it a little brighter that's actually what I want actually we're going to turn the feedback on both of those But now I want to try one more thing. We're going to try to give you some fuzz tones here. So that you can see what the Argonaut will do to a good fuzz here. It'll be a little gnarly. But... Okay, and without. See how that just thickens up the signal? Thank you. 
That is pretty dang cool. All right, I want to try one last thing here. We're going to turn them all on. Keep it from going into too much. Here. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. I am in love with that Juggler V3 and we've only got to play with it for a few minutes. Um, wow, 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 wow. Okay, I, I just have all sorts of ideas of things that I want to try with that. Um, and that Strymon, I just can't say enough about that. That I really do believe that is the, the perfect traveling tape echo slash Benson echo rec kind of style. If you're a touring musician and you don't want to lug around, the real thing that I, nobody's done it better than Strymon, in my opinion, on their emulation is just spot on. And I hope I was able to do the Mythos Argonaut enough justice. There is so much more in that pedal. You can put that in front of any fuzz pedal to create some really gnarly octave fuzzes, um, but you can hear how great it sounds just thickening up a drive section as well, especially when you're doing some solo work. It is phenomenal. And for such a simple you know, pedal worth no dials, no knobs, nothing to really do, it's absolutely fun to mess with. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. Um, for those that uh, this is your first time watching, um, I want to encourage you to join us on the Palin Pedal Picking Challenge. What we're doing is asking you to invite a friend, a family member, somebody who doesn't know anything about guitar, show them what pedals you have and just say, hey, pick out three and stick them in any order and just let them dictate how you're gonna set up your board with those three pedals. And then you turn them on and try to find a sound like we did. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's a lot of fun. And sometimes it will inspire you to find a new sound that you've never played with before. So uh, we hope that this encourages you to do that and hope that you're enjoying the sounds that we find. If you do uh, do this and you wanna share it with the group, please uh, share it on social media. Tag Palin Music and tag me. My Instagram handle is what's this button do, Dustin. I'll put it down here below. Um, but tag us and more importantly, use the hashtag Palin Pedal Pickin' Challenge. I'll have that down below as well here so that we can follow along with you. And in future episodes, we're going to make a little compilation of some of our favorites that people have submitted. Um, so please, please join us for that. Over the next couple of weeks, I am going to be starting my tour going out to uh, all the different Palin Musics in the Midwest, and we're going to do some live shows there, have a lot of fun. Um, we're also going to be doing a little Two Rock Amps celebration here very shortly, so I'll have more information on that coming up soon. Uh, we're probably going to be doing it on May 30th in the Kansas City store, um, but I'll have all the details uh, very, very shortly. We'll post them on social media, so we'd love to have you join us for that. Uh, up at the shop. Well, thank you all so much for coming this week. Can't wait to share with you some more fun on next week's Palin Pedal Picking Challenge. But for this week, I want you to have a wonderful week. Take care and we'll see you soon.